Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Boozer here. Thanks for stopping by. In today's video, I want to go over um, some things about the Altar of Souls. So the Altar of Souls is right here in the middle of your ba uh, bastion. Um, this uh, feature content basically revolves around the Iron Twins system that they have. Um, I'm going to go over what uh, my stash looks like, what my strategies are, how we can approach this, and maybe provide you guys with some useful information so you guys can make some more educated decisions maybe uh, or change up your play style so that it better fits with uh, what you guys what you guys need so let's jump right into it all right so just hopping into my altar of souls here you see i'm pretty stacked up on resources right now um, so my general strategy is these silver coins will obviously get sold um, into the stones but the stones i will only um, pull so these small stones i'll only pull during a champion uh, chase event so the chase event. So right now, currently, there's a soulstone rush. So this rush event is actually made from. Uh, it's made for these higher value stones. So if you have some of these big ones, or spenders um, <clears throat> want to pull some of these big ones, then these are a pretty good value, right? Because you can get all these goodie rewards if you have um, seven, seven big ones, um, and a couple small ones. But the small ones don't get really good value here. They actually get better value for the champion chase version of this event uh, where they have a chance to high roll into uh, higher rarity uh, souls so with that being said my general strategy here is whenever i get uh, any of these uh, resources so i get the um, silver coins gold coins and then the uh, blood coins i guess i basically convert them into the uh, immortal essence or the uh, eternal essence so the reason why is because um, the way that I'm doing it is I basically build each of my um, souls from the first level. So I build it from the beginning to the end, uh, unless I pulled something in between. So for example, here's my six star Rodos. I built him up from first star all the way to six star. And this is the only way for a free to play player to guarantee that you get something that you want in the end. So the system has been out for about a year and four months now um, and I've built two six star champions from scratch so they didn't start with the soul and then I found the first one in the uh, soul merchant. This refreshes twice a day if you guys didn't know every 12 hours um, and uh, yeah so I built them up from uh, one star to six star and I only have two this one I pulled from a, a medium sized stone, which is pretty lucky. This one I also pulled from a big stone. And this one's actually very useful because Turbo is actually a very useful champion. Um, this one I built from uh, UDK's four star. So I just recently bought his fifth star. <clears throat> so all my big ones are mostly from events. Um, I don't build them up because it's very expensive to build them up. So for example, Artak, I got him from the event, Blizzard from the event. Uh, Haruma, Harima, I built him up from one star to four star. Uh, Uko was from a training event. Wukong was from a Titan event. This one I pulled also um, from a from a random stone. Necrid I built. Sifi I built. Warlord I built. So like for example, like all of these I basically built. Any one of these meta champions or these better champions I basically built. Uh, but Gaius obviously was a pull, very lucky, a six-star legendary. That's actually not too bad, but I don't really use them anywhere. But anyways, I want to go over some of the math um, with why it's so crazy and why I basically um, grind to build them instead of basically gambling on these stones. Like you could sell all your stuff, gamble on stones. Um, and yeah, I'll show you guys the math for all this. All right, guys, so here is some of the math stuff breakdowns for this Altar of Souls. Um, so all this math comes from uh, HH Gaming from Saphir. I'm going to link his old video where he explains a lot of this stuff in detail. Um, but here's the main gist of it. Uh, so if we want to look at this on a monthly standpoint, if you grind Iron Twins monthly, you're going to get 27,000 roughly uh, silver coins, which means you're going to get about 27 of these mortal soul stones per month from grinding iron twins this doesn't include um, any extra uh, gems you put into void day so from this math if you put extra gems into void day you're getting significant returns so if you're going to do any iron twins do it on void uh, day and then spend your 150 gems to get a refill as well um, 
In terms of T1 essences, you're looking at about 129 per month. And then T2 essences, you're looking at about 54 per month. So I did <clears throat> the rough breakdown here of, of what a six star soul actually costs. It costs 460 T1 essences. So that's going to cost you about three, three and a half months, three and a half months of straight grinding on average just to get the T1 essences. The T2 essences is going to take you approximately eight months. So it's going to be approximately a year for you to build enough T1 and T2 essences to build uh, a six star soul from one star. Uh, this is without getting uh, additional um, coins or resources from any other place. So for example, events, for example, selling souls, uh, for example, these uh, bonuses, it doesn't account for any of that. So based on that math, it takes about a year of daily grinding um, to, uh, to get a six star soul. It seems like a lot. It seems like a lot. But the math behind you getting anything useful from pulling is straight up gambling. So it's, it's very difficult to uh, get anything good from this soulstone system. So I know uh, grinding like that long term is not going to be uh, very uh, appealing to a lot of people. But it's the only way to guarantee that you get some progress in this game because otherwise you'll just be gambling. You'll never get your six star soul uh, for anything useful. Um, and yeah, but there is some additional help here. So for Hydra, if you're doing Hydra, it's actually a good source of getting these um, mortal soul stones as well. So from Hydra, if you're doing normal and hard top chesting, you're getting about 20,000 um, coin equivalent per month. So you're getting about 20 of these uh, small stones. If you're doing a uh, normal hard brutal top chest, you're getting about 32. And then if you're doing the hard brutal nightmare, you're getting about 40 of these big ones per month. So that's a big uh, that's a big help, right? You get 40 of these stones per month from doing Hydra. You can sell those for additional resources, which will help put down the cost of uh, your six star soul. So make sure you guys do Hydra. This is a this is a good source of mortal soul stones, which you can save up and use them during more uh, soul stone chase events. Uh, Plarium has been pretty consistent with putting out these chase events um, every six weeks, six weeks to two months. So I think that's a good amount of time to save up these soul stones and give yourself a good chance of getting some higher end rewards. Um, also, Plarium has also insinuated that there would be 2x boosted rates for soul stones eventually. So right now, currently, we have the wish list at 8x. That's going to come from uh, these so stones. I do have a strategy for that as well. I wonder if you guys agree. Let me know in the comments, of course. But basically, I'm advocating you guys save some of these small ones over a six to two, six weeks to eight weeks time period and then use them during your chase event. For the summon rush events or the summon soul summon stone events, basically it's a stone summon events, which is happening right now. Um, those ones are catered to, to the big stones. So if you don't have it, you can't really participate efficiently. Um, so I advise to save it. And if you guys are ever tempted to buy these stones and gamble away, just do this, guys. Just, just, just max it out. Boom. You don't have to think about it anymore. Now you have you 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 can't buy it anymore, right? Now you can't buy the big stones. So don't be tempted by it, okay? It's very important. And then to wrap up, uh, Sophia's math here. So basically, you have the total uh, T1 soul stones per month. So if you're just doing Iron Twins, uh, the daily um, grinding, you're getting about 28 per month. If you're doing it with Hydra, you can see the breakdown here. You're getting about 67 per month at the high end of Hydra, Nightmare, Hard, Brutal, Top Chesting. So you're getting about 67 of these Soul Stones per month. If you're just doing Normal and Hard, you're getting about 48 per month. I mean, these are significant. Um, grinding daily Soul Stones, might, uh, daily Iron Twins might not be possible or might not be something that you're into, but in the long run, it does add up. And this is kind of the only way to get guaranteed value from this system. Otherwise, you're just gambling and hoping to get something, uh, something useful. And it also gives you a clear path on how to get some of the high tiers of these blessings. As you can clearly see, like you do get some pretty good um, stat boost from the early stages, but you're going to get some significant boost at the end as well. Um, and especially you want this six star sheep or six star brimstone, for example, those are very, very important for the areas of content that you're doing. All right. So with that being said, let's hop into my collection here. So basically, um, some people have asked me why I keep certain things and why, 
Um, I don't just sell them, for example. So any legendary uh, soul I will keep, uh, even if it's a duplicate usually. Um, I will only sell them if I desperately need them, like for stash or for resources to buy something else. Um, I'll also keep uh, souls of champions that I think have some potential, um, potentially be used maybe in the future for whatever reason, maybe a stage in Centranos most likely. Um, I'll obviously keep any epic with the high star uh, blessing because that's going to be useful in Centranos. Um, so for example, I don't even know what this one does, um, but I'm going to keep it because it's a five star soul. Um, and yeah, so you can see like my collection here, basically, um, yeah, this is the only soul I have for Dark Kale. I don't have him ascended. That's why he's here. And for example, I basically ascend all my champions unless, um, no, I, I awaken all my champions unless uh, there's some reason. This one's not fully ascended. So that's why it's not, uh, not awakened yet. So there. Probably just waiting for an event to do that. And then a second UDK. So you never know when a second UDK might actually be useful. Could maybe build two arena teams, for example. But likely, I'll probably just um, plus one my current UDK with the second UDK and then sell the rest. But the value of these small um, small souls is not really that much. So that's why I don't feel that it's worthwhile for me to sell it for kind of no reason. Um, so I just hold them around for now. It's kind of like... I don't really have an insanely good reason to keep them. But there's no insanely good reason to sell them. So I hold on to them for now. All right, let's quickly talk about the wish list. So the wish list was recently updated from 2x to 8x. I don't know if it's going to be a significant difference. But basically, this will boost whatever uh, your chances of getting these souls from these pulls. So my strategy is I'm going to uh, put in champions that I want to pull small souls for because that's pretty much what you're going to get from these soul pulls right you're going to get mostly small pulls so which champions will benefit the most from a small stone that you need on your roster that's pretty much what uh what you want so for example like i have two duchesses one duchess doesn't have a soul on her i want a one star soul on her 100 percent, right <clears throat> so that's a pretty clear pick for me i wouldn't pick for example like udk like because my udk is five star uh, ascended um and a six star ascended to of udk to pop out of a small soul is asking a little bit much um so that's basically just a wasted slot so i'm not going to do that so that's why i'm going to choose some lower uh blessed or no blessed champions to be in these slots for the wish uh, for the wish list bonus because this actually guarantee uh, improves your chances of actually getting something useful for your champ for your champions. So, <clears throat> so that's my general strategy for that. Okay, let's talk about the um, general strategy for which champion you want to invest in. That's a pretty big one, and it's going to be a big decision because, like I said, each one of these takes potentially up to a year for you to build. Um, in my opinion, it take. Uh, I think my first two six stars, it took me about eight months. I do grind twice on Sundays and I do get extra resources from doing events and so forth. And obviously it doesn't account for um, bonus resources you get from selling or from uh, getting it from uh, these bonuses here. So it's going to speed up your progression to get the soul a little bit. For me, it's about eight months, <clears throat> but obviously a lot for like a year. Um, so a year, that's a pretty big time investment, right? So you want to make the right choice. So with the new revamp blessing system, um, there is some significant path to where you want to go with things. So the biggest benefactor of the six star, um, six star ascension is basically sheep. Sheep is super, super strong because it no longer requires accuracy. The same can be said about brimstone. Brimstone is 100% guaranteed and it no longer requires accuracy. So if you're doing PvE um, and you require 6-star Brimstone, that's going to boost up the power of your champion quite a bit. If you're doing PvP um, and you go with Sheep, that's also going to boost up your uh, champion quite a bit. So these are champions that um, you want to kind of focus on if you want to go all the way with them. 
Um, there's a lot of champions where you can just cut off at like four four stars, for example. I think most damage dealers will cut off at about four stars at the 38% crit damage, <clears throat> unless they um, want to go all the way to six star or require accuracy. So uh, an example of a champion that can take um, that you can take to four stars, for example, is uh, like Harima. Harima benefits from the uh, crit damage boost, but she doesn't really benefit much from the five star boost. And she won't get anything until the six star boost. So this is a pretty big investment here, especially if you're skipping the five star. So for now, uh, I think she's perfectly viable at four star. A champion that you kind of want to be at five star would be like somebody like Sung Wukong. He does benefit from the plus 75 accuracy because he does benefit from accuracy himself. So that's something to consider. Uh, and then afterwards, you can definitely push him into the six star for Polymorph or Brimstone, actually, because he actually is pretty good in PvE. Um, Something else to consider is uh, support champions, something like Sifi. Sifi obviously benefits quite a bit from being 6-star fully blessed, getting the sheep, because she doesn't require accuracy, she doesn't need it in her kit. However, she has to go through quite a bit to get there, so like the 4-star and 5-star, both don't really benefit her much. She's basically just getting 100%, uh, 100 extra HP just to get the 6-star. So it's a pretty big investment for Sifi. Uh, just an example, right? Um, so I kind of recommend like... If you're not uh, going all in on the champion, you kind of can sit pretty at three stars for most support champions uh, if they don't require accuracy. If they require accuracy, then shooting for five makes sense, and then you can consider going for six. That's kind of like my mentality about it. So um, if you guys want to save resources, support champions go to three, DPS go to four, and then you have to really weigh who do you want to go to six. So the big thing here is with six, you want to make sure that you can use the six star version of the blessing efficiently so either sheep brimstone those are probably the top two um crushing rend crushing rend would be very good for like hydra uh, somebody like trunda or something because they ignore quite a bit of uh, defense um, <clears throat> the other ones i can see i mean you can definitely use six star on a lot of these blessings but those are probably the three that have most serious impact on whatever content you're tackling um, so obviously take all of that into consideration before you fully invest in a champion The worst thing that you could do is start buying one stars for tons and tons of champions So for example for me, I actually don't have too many one stars um, Outside of ones that I pulled uh, Because I knew that spending the 20 silver coins was actually pretty significant Once you start spending the, the, the 20 silver coins or the 40 silver coins just to pick up like one star souls all the time uh, sorry, the silver essences, <clears throat> then you're just never going to be able to bank up your resources enough so that you can actually buy the higher tier, more impactful souls. So just something to consider, guys. Um, obviously, having a one star on like, you know, a PvE champion so you have a chance to land Brimstone is important. But you're going to have to weigh that out based on your account, how active you are in farming Iron Twins and how much resources you actually have on your account. All right, guys, that's all I got for you guys in today's video. So hopefully you guys got uh, some info from this to make up uh, to make some better decisions in the future so basically to wrap up i want to say if you guys farm this stuff daily you're going to be able to save up some mortal soul stones and then uh pull them during mortal uh soul stone chase events instead of these rush events uh then you'll maximize the chance to gain resources the other thing is make sure you guys choose wisely on who you want to awaken make sure you guys set up your wish list properly make sure you guys don't needlessly sell some of your souls uh, especially when they can become useful you never know when they can become useful. And second, sec and lastly, I kind of advocate saving um, resources to build souls from one star as opposed to just gambling uh, on stone. So as opposed to just buying stones and gambling for souls, I advocate um, building up resources, building up your souls from level one. I know it's a grind, but in the end, you do get something out of it and you know what you're going to get out of it. So that's it for me, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think and what you guys are doing uh, in terms of this whole uh, altar of soul system. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.